my intro before my intro. I uh, just want to let you know, I can't tell you how sorry I am. I have just been swamped lately with work, with, uh, you know, crew, with, you know, getting people uh, and things uh, set up for the store. So I'm about, oh, I don't know, two months late getting this uh, uh, video out. But I'm going to be dropping a video today, and I'm going to be following up with uh, another video like day after tomorrow. So enjoy, okay? Good morning, guys. Joe again with your local farmer and uh, I want to start out by apologizing that I haven't had much to post lately uh, really there hasn't been much to post except for the fact that we do we do now have our store open for the year I'll show you that here real shortly and uh, there really hasn't been much going on we've had some real bad weather here recently I'll show you a little clip of what that looks like We've had some crazy weather for the middle of April. Well, here we are on April 12th, and uh, I think this is a record, guys. Um, we got snow yesterday. Uh, I actually got snow in the morning. It started about um, 7 a.m. or so. Oh, here, let me... Maybe that's a little bit better. Uh, anyhow, yesterday morning, uh, snow started in about 7 o'clock in the morning. And it snowed uh, almost nonstop until about oh, about one or two o'clock in the afternoon, and, and uh, it was never never colder than freezing, so the snow never stuck around. But uh, we did get all oh, probably two and a half, three inches of snow yesterday, and then this by this morning it was it was completely gone. You, in fact, you couldn't even really tell that we had received snow. Uh, but today uh, we started out real nice. And, and then it turned dark here oh, about an hour ago, and we got one heck of a, 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 a thunderstorm rolled through and hail, and as soon as the hail let up, it turned to snow again. So here we are. Like I said, I think this is a record for us. Uh, this is April 12th, and it's snowing, and that is just unheard of around here. Now, of course, it's, it's well above freezing. It's, you know, Fahrenheit. It's probably... Uh, Oh, 38, maybe even 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So the snow is not sticking around. In fact, if I showed you down at the ground level, as soon as the snow hits the ground, it, it melts. It uh, It's way too warm for it. But, uh, God, this is crazy weather this year. Uh, must be all that global warming that, that they're talking about. So, anyhow. And the other thing is, I love showing you guys videos of uh, us doing tractor work and stuff like that but there hasn't been much tractor work going on especially with all this rain and weather we've had if we look over here our fields are just wet and miserable so uh, the general rule is when it's uh, pouring down rain outside we're not doing tractor work and so uh, yeah hasn't been much to show you the other thing is uh, the little bit of tractor work I did do here about two weeks ago I uh, threw my back out. It was one of those days where I didn't uh, didn't take my GoPro with me and I didn't uh, shoot any video. It was just hurry up, get something done real quick. Well, in the two hour time that it took me to run out a, a load of spray, uh, I jacked my back up real bad. And so uh, I'm still getting over that. I'm just barely let's just say uh, barely getting back to uh, my usual self and so I've been in major pain lately so that didn't help either uh, but other than that store's going well I'll, I'll fill you guys in on a little few things going on one thing that's going to be different this year is I've, I've got some uh, beehives and I'll show you a little video about that too just wanted to show you what I got going on today today I'm building honey frames um, I Never done any beekeeping before, but I thought uh, this last winter that you know, it would be awful fun. And so uh, it's a little hobby that I'm gonna try to get into. Uh, see if I can get stung a bunch of times. Yay, it'll be fun. Um, what I thought I'd let you guys know is that uh, we've actually been involved with um, beekeeping uh, quite a lot uh, in our farm's history. Uh, we used to raise uh, clover seed 
And uh, in order to get good clover seed production, we had to have bees brought in from uh, local beekeepers. We'd actually pay them to come and, you know, if you will, pollinate our crops for us. And uh, it was always something that we were, you know, we had an interest in, we were around them, we talked to the beekeepers, but we were busy enough that we couldn't actually do it ourselves. Well, I'm not saying that I'm slow or that I have a whole lot of free time, but uh, I finally figured that, you know what, it's a good time to, uh, to try this out for myself. And, uh, you know, um, we'll see. We'll see if we have some fun. Um, you know, that's really it. The other part of it is um, on our farm in the past, we've done spring farm tours where, sorry, uh, we've invited uh, school groups to our farm and, and talked about agriculture and talked about, uh, you know, the uh, uh, plant cycles and whatnot. And uh, bees were a big part of that talk. Well, I'm not saying that we couldn't you know, talk about bees or we couldn't tell kids about bees, but the problem was, well, we didn't have any firsthand knowledge. You know, it was all pretty much, you know, we, we were teaching them just essentially what we had learned either from books or articles and stuff like that. And so this is going to be a fun little experiment for me to, you know, actually do some beekeeping myself and, and see what that's like. And then, like I said, if I can bring back uh, spring farm tours on our farm, um, I'll be able to have some, you know, firsthand knowledge and, and maybe even, uh, you know, demonstrate how to work the bees uh, with the kids. So anyhow, this will be a fun little, you know, fun little something. Uh, and I'll, I'll share with you guys from time to time as I, you know, as the season goes along, you know, how the bees are doing. If I, you know, can get a, uh, you know, get a hive going and everything. Um, right now, by the way, uh, we're finding that uh, purchasing bees is really problematic because they're completely sold out. Uh, they sell them as what they call nukes. Nuke is short for nucleus colony. And uh, I've checked with a handful of people and nukes are just not available right now. So what I'm gonna do instead, if you look right over there, there's my uh, beehive. And what I'm gonna do is um, try to find a swarm. Uh, this time of year, as, as we get into spring, uh, the bees, will leave the hive and try to create a new queen, will impregnate a new, new queen, if you will. And uh, a lot of times uh, in the past couple of years, we found them, you know, swarmed up on a fence post or something like that. It'll be just a huge mass of bees. And uh, I'm gonna actually try to find a colony of bees and sweep them into my box and uh, off we go. And cost of zero for me, so yay. Well, I don't have that awful much going on right now. Sorry for the, the traffic noise, but I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour through our store here. Thought maybe you guys would enjoy that. So here we are, here's the front of our store, as seen from the road. And you notice we've got uh, two greenhouse canopies. Actually, we've got four greenhouse canopies put up out here. And they're all loaded with flower baskets and plant starts. See all the pretty flower baskets. All the pretty flowers. And in here, all the pretty baskets. One of the things I'd point out here is you notice we have drip irrigation system actually built into this uh, sales greenhouse so that uh, all summer long we can have them on a, uh, a dripper. Now we don't put an automated dripper on this, not with a timer, but you know every day we can go and just turn the drippers on for say half an hour and uh, uh, run the drippers. It's a whole lot quicker, cheaper, and easier than uh, having employees go through and water by hand. So anyhow, here you go. Uh, just a heads up for you, by the way, I'm gonna go back over to this corner. Now you gotta do me a favor. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret and you gotta remember not to tell anyone. If you notice over here, we've got tomato starts. All sorts of different tomato starts. And the funny thing that I have to tell you guys is at least in our corner of the world here, it's still a little early to be putting tomato starts in the ground. But inevitably, 
people will come. They'll ask for them. We'll say, yes, we have them. They'll say, I want to buy them. And we're thinking to ourselves, it's way too early. They'll buy them, they'll take them home, and they'll kill them. And then they'll be back next week to buy more. And we're okay with that. Uh, as long as they come here. So anyhow, you see we've got some U-cut herbs. Got some chives. And then we go into our store. And there's Mrs. Local Farmer. Say hello. Hello. Honey sticks next to our point of sale system. All of our jam. I have to say, one of the, the things that I, I believe, I don't know to be true, but I believe, is that we have actually too many varieties of jam. Uh, not that we can get by with, you know, only, say, three or four varieties, but my God, we must have 15 different varieties of jam. And in fact, this isn't all of it. I'll even show you more here. Over here, we have salad dressings. We have what we call our salad cooler. It's going to be all of our, our greens and lettuces and stuff. We do carry a small variety of dairy products. Over here is our freezer. This is a fun one. These are all, this is a, an outfit called Willamette Valley Pie. And they are all pre-made, ready-to-bake pies. So you take them home, you put them in the oven for 90 minutes at 400 degrees, and you have the perfect pie, just like Grandma made. They also have some frozen fruit here. Here's our canning section. For anybody looking to get into canning. In fact, we even have pressure canners we sell. Over here, this is, uh, by the way, anybody looking to get into canning, this is what you got to get yourself first. The Ball Blue Book. That will give you any information you need on how to can just about anything. So, anyhow. we got some empty bench space here. But it gets down to our honey corner. The thing that just blows our mind is the amount of honey we go through. We had a guy come in last week and bought four gallons of honey in one sit, you know, one purchase. Just unbelievable. But uh, we go through a ton of honey around here. Uh, there's a big craze, the uh, big belief that uh, raw honey will help people fend off um, uh, allergies. And, and of course, the key is it has to be raw honey and it has to be local honey. And that you're, you're getting, uh, what do you want to say, enzymes, if you will, from local trees and whatnot. And it'll actually help people with allergies. This is a great little line here is uh, Rose City Pepperheads. So this is out of Portland, Oregon. And, oh, we got the jar turned. There we go. Turn back the other way. There we go. Thai Mandarin. And this is, my wife loves this stuff because she's a nut from California. And uh, several different types of hot jellies. And uh, we don't sell a ton of them, but boy, they, they do sell really well here. So anyhow, as you can see along the back wall here, we've got garlic and onions, different types of onions, different types of potatoes. By the way, uh, Washington State, we're known for onions and potatoes. So those are all locally grown. Well, I should say within the state of Washington grown. Over here, this is our produce bench. So limes, lemons, we've got some grapes, plums, oranges, tangerines, oh, grapefruit. Anyhow, back over here, we get, go to apples again, Washington grown apples. Where are we? Pink Ladies, Golden Delicious, Sonata, Fuji's, Honeycrisp, and Sugar Bees. By the way, Honeycrisp, as far as I'm concerned, Honeycrisp are the ones. And we got celery, cabbage, artichokes, beets, all of that stuff. Now over here, this is a fun one. We do have a couple of items here. These are uh, what they call a private label operation. So they uh, they like they put our farm name on them, Busy Farms. But we don't actually uh, produce these. But we've got some, you know, pickled green beans and garlic and pickled okra and, and things like that. These farmhouse pickles are just adored by a whole, um, whole bunch of people. They'll, they'll make trips out here just to buy the farmhouse pickles. We make apple butter. That's our apple butter that we made. And then up here, this is special here, we've got no sugar added jam for uh, those folks that are diabetic. And, uh, oh, gotta turn them. 
I'm gonna turn them correctly. There you go. No sugar added. Marion berry. There you go. Uh, most years, these are made with our own berries. Um, for those who may have heard, we had a huge heat wave this last year that just killed almost all of our Marion berry crop and and, and a lot, awful lot of our cane berries. Just killed them right now, and uh, so. Uh, we actually had to go out and purchase some berries to, to get our jam needs completed this winter. So anyhow, here's a fun one for you, hot sauces. We uh, had a killer year last year for um, peppers and, uh, uh, well, for all the peppers, let's put it that way. Had a friend of ours come to, come to us and said that he would gladly put together a line of hot sauces with our peppers. And they have been selling like hotcakes. And uh, so this is kind of fun. This is a new, shall we say, a new entry for us. Uh, oh, over here, more canning supplies. We went heavy on canning supplies this year, by the way. The, the big reason is that in the last two years, we have not been able to get canning supplies. Uh, it was this thing of, you know, by the time we tried to put an order together in April or May, they said, we're done. We're sold out for the year. And so this year we put an order together in February and lo and behold, we got our order. So uh, we went really heavy on, on canning supplies. So if you need them, give us a call. And then this here is really neat. Um, there's many different companies that sell seed, but in the Northwest, this Ed Hume Seed, he's a local, local guy out of Puyallup, Washington and a local family run business. And so we had an opportunity to go with uh, three or four different companies and definitely decided that the Ed Hume seed line was the way to go. Uh, again, local, local company. We're going to support local guys. And then here we go. Aspergrass. Fresh Aspergrass out of Pasco, Washington. Um, Pasco, Washington is uh, in south central Washington state. And they are known for some of the best asparagus production in the United States. And so we have it here fresh, ready to go. So anyhow, and then I love this. Our little blue bag is really quite green. Dad came up with that and uh, it is quite cheesy, but it works. We sell these bags here. Washington State, by the way, has a new uh, bag requirement. Uh, we are not allowed to sell or give away uh, single use bags anymore. Uh, we generally fall into the description of a grocery store we now have to offer multiple use bags and we have have to, by law, charge eight cents a bag. Now that, that eight cents does not go to the state or anything, but we have to charge eight cents a bag. It's the standard rate. So anyhow, here's another outfit, Pasta Mamas. This is a, I believe they're local. I think they're local um, pasta manufacturer. And they've got all sorts of different types of uh, handmade pastas. And I hear it's quite good. I've, I've only tried a few of the flavors, but uh, I'm not much of a pasta person myself, really. And then we've got a small local company. Uh, this is out of a little place called Ridgefield, Washington. Just, uh, oh, it's about six or seven miles north of us. It's called Kilobytes. And they have caramel apple popcorn. And this is tikka, well, if, I'm sure if you've heard of tikka masala, uh, an Indian dish, this is masala madness popcorn. So it's kind of a weird flavor. Um, I'm not much of an Indian flavor guy, but uh, I have to admit, I kind of like it. And we got some things that are on sale here. Uh, some biscottis, again, from Kilobytes, same company as the, the popcorn. And then hand pies down here. These are also the same company as the frozen pies over in the freezer. And then fresh bread. Fresh bread's coming from an outfit called Marcy's Bakery in Portland, Oregon. So... Almost everything we do is all fresh. It's all local. It's all from uh, companies that were are within, you know, shouting distance from us. So, well, I hope you guys uh, like the little tour here, and let me know what you think. Well, one of the things I forgot to tell you guys is that uh, one of the things we love having in our store is some of these antique uh, tools. You see, we've got some, uh, you know, antique corn planters. Got an insecticide sprayer. Uh, a scythe, several different things here, an old griddle, an old auger, a couple of old crosscut saws, 
several different old things like this, old head shoots from, uh, you know, when we used to have cattle. And up in, in the rafters there, I guess you can call them rafters, we've got an old horse saddle there, bicycles, an old block and tackle. And, uh, yeah, we, we really enjoy having some of these antique tools here. Let me show you a few more. Over here, over here, we've got an old drum style butter churn, a, uh, uh, oh, what did you call that? A ringer, a ringer that would mount on the side of an old wash basin, a couple old uh, lanterns and stuff. Here's a fun one for you. This used to actually, uh, oh, this over here. This was actually our farm's uh, blowtorch. This came right out of the shop and uh, back in the 1950s and 60s. That was the blowtorch that we would use when we needed to uh, solder things. And uh, yeah, got some things up here. We got a, some uh, grinding, you know, grinders and an old, uh, oh, an old pedal style, uh, what do you call it? A grinding wheel, whetstone. Yeah, we got some, some really neat, fun things up there. So if you guys see a, an article here, or a, a piece that you want to know more about, you uh, mention it down in the comments. And uh, I'd be more than glad to tell you what I may or may not know about them. Here, I'll pan around one more time here. An old brace and bit. Like I said, an old two-handed crosscut saw minus the handles. couple of draw knives, a couple of wedges. I believe those wedges are for splitting um, uh, splitting fence rails out of cedar. Oh, we just hung this one up here. Uh, evidently, none of our employees had ever seen a boot jack before. So that was a fun one. And there you go, yeah. noise here uh, yeah it's raining a bit today just a little uh, it can stop raining anytime and we'd really appreciate it we got a good friend who uh, oh they're slowing down a little bit we got a good friend uh, Jack who lives over in uh, or ha uh, grew up in South Dakota and he uh, made a comment the other day that uh, you know hey uh, we can always use more, we can always use more rain. And we said things like, shut up, Jack. Now over here, uh, sometimes we don't need more rain. Hope you guys are getting enough rain where you're at. Well, guys, um, thanks for watching this video. Uh, these, I apologize about the way that this video has kind of just jumped around from topic to topic. Uh, there's really been nothing going on for the last several weeks. We've had nothing but rain here. It has terribly impacted our sales. Um, it's funny you can't you can't give away a flower basket when it's pouring down rain. But uh, anyhow, so we've shoot we haven't done any tractor work for nearly four weeks. Uh, anyhow, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video and immediately turn right back around and start another video, uh, hopefully with some tractor work because we're finally seeing some. Uh, um, sun in the forecast here. Uh, but I'm going to finish out this video with some uh, spraying that we did here the other day, spraying uh, uh, what we call bloom spray in strawberries.